a slightly more difficult section, but you were unsurprisingly picked to be part of the Springbok squad for that World Cup in France in 07. But then disaster struck, which forced you to withdraw. For those who don't know, can you just take us through what happened? Before the World Cup, you know, we were very excited and I was part of that Bulls team that had just won the Super Rugby. So we were full of confidence and I was playing really good also. And um, I was 22 years old, basically like at the peak of, of my, well, I'm saying at the peak of my career, but just playing really well, part of a great team. Then two weeks before the World Cup, I start uh, coughing up blood. And, you know, when you're playing rugby, you know, you think it's part of the game and like maybe it's just a bad cold or whatever, an infection. And then uh, the doctor took us for scans and, you know, it ended up being pulmonal embolism, which is blood clots in your lungs. And, you know, the picture was quite bad. So my lungs were filled with these blood clots, which is a miracle that was actually alive. Um, because if you have those things, it means they actually went through your heart. And it was quite a shock because, you know, obviously where does it come from? Um, you know, I, I really live a clean life, um, eat healthy. I never used a drug in my life. And it happens. So what do you do with it? And like I said, if it wasn't for my faith, I probably would have collapsed. Uh, that kept me really strong, uh, just understanding that it's beyond your control. And then I had to withdraw from the World Cup because I couldn't play. So I had to uh, uh, withdraw from the World Cup, um, go on six months uh, medicine, probably never going to play rugby again. So I um, took the, you know, I took the route of using medicine and uh, my faith, believing that I will play again. And I had to be on medicine for six months, didn't play the game, watch the Springboks, win the World Cup. And then afterwards, I joined them during the World Cup uh, 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 routes through South Africa and you know what a feeling that could be you know uh, celebrating with everybody but um, you know not being part of it but you have no control over these things so uh, and then I was just fortunate to have another 10 years of my rugby career so yeah it was quite a setback but I mean if you speak to any sporting or any rugby player that's part of the part of the journey and nobody knows uh, what happens behind the scenes and the uh, depression and uh, the mental mental challenges you go through. I was still quite young, so I had, a, I had still a long life or career ahead of me. So there was still, you know, some positivity in that. I think if I had to heed it, like at the end of my career, it would be a different thing. Did you notice anything when you got back, like in terms of your lung capacity or anything in terms of performance? Before we discovered it, I had, I had a lot of difficulty breathing. Um, uh, that's where I actually, the night before we went to the doctor, I actually thought I was going to die because I was, I was in the hotel room. I couldn't breathe while I was sleeping. Um, I had a lot of difficulty and you know how these things are that's why I'm saying I have a lot of uh, empathy with, with players um, because you, you, you um, suppress a lot of things because you just go on because you're like a machine and um, so I just thought well flip you know I'm just having a bad infection or whatever and then the next morning we had to go for scans and uh, so I had a lot of difficulty breathing and then, um, yeah, we saw the scans and, you know, we saw the blood clots and that's extremely, extremely dangerous, the fact that you have them and that you're actually still alive. So, and then you have to use blood thinners, um, you know, uh, uh, injections, things like that to, 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 to get rid of the clots and then uh, stabilize your blood again so you can get back uh, doing contact sports. So that's why I'm saying it's a miracle actually that I could play again. I mean, they actually thought at the time you would potentially have to retire from more sports, didn't they? As a, a yeah. blow to the head could have potentially resulted in you bleeding out into your brain and dying. Yeah, look, I think I think the game and the regulations on the game has changed also quite a bit. I, it's, I mean, it's um, 50, almost at 15, 16 years ago. So... Uh, if you look at what's happening, you know, with the high tackles and red cards and even like concussion regulations, um, it's getting more strict. And I mean, I must say, being honest and you know, watching rugby now and looking at what, you know, you put your body through, you cannot actually imagine <laughs> what you are doing while you're playing the game because it's just part of your life. You don't feel it. You just do it and what you do. But I think scientifically, when doctors look at it, it makes no no sense to them at all. The fact that human uh, adult men are running into one another, 
with all yeah. the risks involved. So that's why I'm I think in the regulations, you know, it's becoming more strict and strict. I often stand at the side of training and and watch a mall session and I go, imagine bringing a random person that's never seen this sport before and yes, they yes. watch a mall session for the yes. forwards acting like complete idiots. Just eight men just absolutely smashing into each other with a ball in the middle. And you look at, sometimes you look at me, you go, imagine you didn't have a clue. You'd be like, what is going on there? What a stupid sport. What is that? You know? When you play, when you play, you don't think about it. <laughs> don't think about it like that. You don't. love it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> scrums, even worse. Love it. Love yeah, it. scrums, amazing. <laughs> Sorry, um, so what are these lot doing here? Oh, they're just going to all like bind up in a big mass and just recognize their each other. necks and try <laughs> yeah. to dominate each other for a ball. How good. Yeah. I, I can't imagine um, playing at Loftus helps with the, with the lung issue either. Like, been there a few times and uh, altitude, like, I'm guessing that had nothing beautiful. to do with it, but it's beautiful, eh? It's like it was one of our um, one of our our secrets. Well, it helped us a lot of times, but we got some 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 proper lessons there too. Yeah, but do you um, believe in that? Because some of the we chatted about it, and there was we'd often travel up just for a twenty four hour period because they said try and get in and out so that it doesn't mm-hmm. actually have too much of an effect on you. Do you agree with that? I I think to a certain extent, um, but like, you know, again, like everything develops, I think a lot of it's in the mind, but it's a fact. I mean, we can we can feel it when we go down to the coast, uh, how much more oxygen you have. Right. But the reality is, I mean, the intensity of the game still makes you so tired. Um, I mean, that's that's actually the that's the reality about about uh, the game is like, you're gonna be you're gonna be flat tired no matter where you play, at altitude, under altitude, in water, underwater. It's irrelevant. You're gonna be you're gonna to have to fight for everything. So um, I think it does make a difference in the beginning. The British Lions, when they toured 2009, they did quite a lot of altitude training and they adapted well to it. You 